Shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, as always, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, and next double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone, who teach and who rule well, peace, blessings, and safety. To all you sincere Akim, keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear, whether they forbear. All right, so this lesson is going to be going into the understanding of this verse right here. All right, Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. All right, and it reads, it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. All right, what does this really mean? Okay, it doesn't mean that that uh, the spiritual demon Satan is at war, you know, with the heavenly father and, and the spiritual demon Satan took the kingdom over. That's not what it's talking about. All right. It's talking about here on the earth. The kingdom of heaven is the Israelites. Okay. The kingdom of heaven will be here on the earth when the Israelites come back into power and rule over the earth. All right. So when it says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Okay. Because at that time, the Israelites were occupied by the Romans all right? and before that by the Greeks. All right. And even before that, by the Persians and the Medes and before that, the Babylonians, the Assyrians. And before that, many different other heathen nations and before them, ancient Egypt. So it goes all the way down the line. All right. This is our, our final captivity that we're in now. But at that time, they were in the captivity of the Roman Empire. OK, so the violent. And the violent is Esau Edom, all right, the so-called white man, and the violent take it by force. Okay, so they had uh, taken over and captured the children of Israel at that time. And we're going to go into some history on that as well, because without uh, understanding this history, you're not really able to understand the New Testament. Okay, when it talks about uh, Jews and Greeks, it's going into the understanding that we're about to dive into right now. So, first, I'm going to start off here with Alexander the Great. This was the beginning of Esau taking over the kingdom of heaven, all right, which is really the Israelites, all right, overcoming them. This is 1 Maccabees chapter 1, starting at verse 1, and it reads, And it happened that after Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and the Medes, that he reigned his stead, he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. All right, so this was moving on from the second beast unto the third beast, which the third beast was the Roman, uh, excuse me, the, the Greek Empire. All right, and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. This is talking about a man named Alexander the Great and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, insomuch that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted. And his heart was lifted up. And he gathered a mighty strong host, army, and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. All right, and, and one of these was the Israelites. All right. After after the Persians and Medes fell, the Greeks took over that, that region of the world. All right. And after and after these things he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, for this reason he called his servants such as were honorable. And had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. Okay, and he parted his kingdom into four. It says, So Alexander reigned twelve years and then died, and his servants bear rule, everyone in his place. Okay, and you had you had four different kingdoms that split from that. You had uh the Ptolemaic kingdom, they took over ancient Egypt, you had the uh Seleucid, Seleucid kingdom, you had a uh, Cassander. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and look it up real quick. Just to make sure that I got it correct. Alright. Those those I'm I'm pretty sure those are three. But let's go ahead and look it up. Four Kingdoms split from Alexander the Great. This is when the Edomites first came into power. Okay. So, let's see. It says, Ptolemaic, Seleucid, the kingdom of Pergamon, and Asia Minor, and Macedon. 
All right, let's see what the name of the four generals were. Who were the four kings of Greece after Alexander the Great? This is what I, this is what I was trying to quote. Hmm. Doesn't give the exact answer, but but, but uh, I know Ptolemaic, Ptolemy, um, Ptolemy Soter, and then you had um, Seleucid Empire. Let's see. Let's look up four generals. That's that's a better. Let's see. Okay, here it is. This is what I was. This is what I was. Um, I was referring to. Instead of one successor, however, there were actually four generals who succeeded Alexander the Great. Antagonists, Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucus. And Ptolemy and Seleucus, they were the two most powerful. Right, the Ptolemaic, they took over ancient Egypt, which um, eventually led to the ancient Egyptians being colonized as well. And that's where you had um, Cleopatra, and you started to have Greek uh, Greek pharaohs all right, in this time. And then you had the Seleucid Empire. Okay, but we're not talking about ancient Egypt, we're talking about the Israelites. But they did take over the known world at that time, after Alexander the Great. Okay, so it says, let's see. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died, and his servants bear rule, everyone in this place. And after his death, they all, they put, all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. Okay, so this was the beginning. And there came out of them a wicked root. Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been who had been in hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. All right, so wicked Israelites, okay, they said, Let us join unto the Greeks and the Romans. All right, let us make a covenant with the heathen, okay? Just like the Israelites have always tried to do that. It says, Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen, all right? So they went to the king and he said, Okay, yeah, go ahead and do uh, after the, the Greek and Roman practices and sacrifices. It says, Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. And made themselves uncircumcised, and forsook the holy covenant, and joined themselves to the heathen, and were sold to do mischief. Now when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, he thought to reign over Egypt, that he might have dominion of two realms. Wherefore, he entered into Egypt with a great multitude, with chariots and elephants and horsemen in the great navy, and made war against Ptolemy, king of Egypt. But Ptolemy was afraid of him, and fled, and many were wounded to death. Thus they got the strong cities in the land of Egypt, and he took the spoils thereof. And after that, Antiochus had smitten Egypt. He returned again in the hundred forty and third year, and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. All right, and this was B.C. All right, this is before the Savior. And entered proudly into the sanctuary, and took away the golden altar and the candlestick of light, and all the vessels thereof, and the table of the shoe bread, the pouring vessels, and the vials, and the senses of gold, and the veil, and the crown, and the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all which he pulled off. He took also the silver, and the gold, and the precious vessels. Also he took the hidden treasures which he found. And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre, and spoken very proudly. Therefore there was a great mourning in Israel, and every place where they were, so that the princes and elders mourned, the virgins and young men were made feeble, and the beauty of women was changed. Every bridegroom took up lamentation, and she sat in the marriage chamber, and she that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaviness. The land also was moved for the inhabit from the inhabitants thereof, and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. Okay, so this is this is the Greeks that sacked the temple. All right, and this happened many times between the Greeks and the Romans. Okay, it says, and after you, after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute under the cities of Judah who came into Jerusalem with a great multitude, and spake peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore, and destroyed much people of Israel. Same tactics. All right, do the same thing today. All right, they come and speak peaceably. Listen to scriptures. Let's go ahead and get that right quick. All right, they come and speak peaceably, but war is in their heart. Psalms 
55, 21. Alright, it says, the, mouth of his, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Alright, constantly are they gathered together for war. Continuing on. Okay, it says, And when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire and pulled down the houses and walls thereof on every side. But the women and children took they captive and possessed the cattle. Then builded they the city of David with a great and strong wall and with mighty towers and made it a stronghold for them. And they put therein a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. They stored it also with armor and victuals. And when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid them up there. So they became a sore snare, for it was a place to lie and wait against the sanctuary and an evil adversary to Israel. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it, insomuch that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them, whereupon the city was made an habitation of strangers and became strange to those that were born in her, and her own children left her. Okay, so they took Jerusalem, they took the kingdom of heaven, they took the children of Israel, they took their, their temple and their their uh, you know their their treasure and and made waste her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness her feasts were turned in the morning her sabbaths into reproach her honor into contempt all right as all had been her glory so was her dishonor had, had, had increased and her excellency was turned into mourning now look at this okay this is this is that's them taking the kingdom all right they took it by force now here's the part where you need to understand about how the the Greeks when when talking about Jews and Greeks this is this is what it's really going into. If you don't understand this, then you're not gonna understand what it's really going into. Right, we always say that the the Greeks that it's talking about, all all uh, Jews and Greeks are one in Yahweh Shai. Right, it's really talking about Israelites that were Hellenized. Okay, they they were um they forsake they forsook their customs and followed after the Greeks, which we just read that in the beginning of the chapter. Okay, but this is what happened. First Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and that everyone should leave his laws, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion, and sacrificed unto idols, and profaned the Sabbath. For the king had sent letters by messengers into Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days, and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. They set up altars and groves and chapels of idols, and sacrificed swine's flesh and unclean beasts, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation, to the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. So this first started with the Greeks, Esau, even the so-called white man. All right, they were the ones that pushed this out in mass. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. In the selfsame manner wrote he unto his whole kingdom, and appointed overseers over all the people, and commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Okay? So, in today's modern day time, they did, the, they did literally the exact same thing. Uh, with the ancient, with the, um, excuse not the ancient Israelites, but the Israelites that came here in slavery. Okay, they beat their heritage out of them, and they gave them Christianity uh, with, that is full of pagan practices. And they told them that if you don't, you know, uh, obey these pagan practices, then you'd be put to death. All right. They, they, they used to say, uh, are you saved by Jesus? And if you didn't say it, if you didn't say you were saved by Jesus, they would kill you. All right. So, of course, over time. Israelites in fear of their life, okay, they, you know, they bowed down, all right, same thing happened here, okay, that's what it's talking about when it said the violent take the kingdom of heaven by force, all right, you must understand this history to understand the New Testament, okay, and also, uh, they said, they said they set up overseers, the same thing they did in slave days, okay, those, those, uh, black Christian pastors back in, in the days of slavery, they were overseers, as long as, they kept the slaves docile and worshiping white Jesus. They would get rewarded for that. All right. Maybe they got better slave quarters. They got to eat a little bit better food. All right. Okay. What have you? So it's it's the same thing, man. So it says, let's read that again. Um, verse uh, 51. 
In the selfsame manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, and commanded the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto him, to wit every one that forsook the law, and so they committed evils in the land. All right. Let's see, let's skip down. It says, And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law, which they found, they burnt them with fire, and whosoever was found with any book of the testament, the prophecies, the the uh, law, the Psalms, okay, the Old Testament, or if any committed to the law, the king's commandment was that they should be put that they should put him to death. Alright. So this is this is the beginning of that. Alright, and let's let's keep reading. It says, At which the, at, I'm gonna skip down to um I'll read verse 59. Now the five and twentieth day of the month, they did sacrifice upon the idol altar, which was upon the altar of God. Does that sound familiar? The five and twentieth day of the month, the 25th, all right, December 25th, okay, what, what, what we call today uh, Christmas, all right, which is a pagan holiday. We're not supposed to celebrate it. Okay, on the, on the 25th day of the month, which is also the winter solstice, the beginning of the winter solstice, <laughs> They did sacrifice upon the idol altar, which was upon the altar of God. Okay, so the 25th day of the month, they had Christmas, and they put up Serapis Christus, white Jesus, up there. At which time, according to commandment, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised. And they hanged their infants about their necks, and rifled their houses, and slew them that had circumcised them. Howbeit, many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Wherefore, the rather to die, that they might not be defiled with meats, and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So then they died, and there was very great wrath upon Israel. All right, so this was the difference right here. This was the Jews. Okay, the Jews, they held on to the customs. They said, we would rather die than to profane uh, ourselves against the Lord. All right, and then you had the Greek, you had the uh, the Israelites that had they given in. Okay, they, they sold out, and they said, okay, all right, we'll do what you tell us to do, and they became Greeks. This is the difference right here. This is the Jews and the Greeks that are spoken of in the New, in the New Testament. All right, let's get, let's get some scriptures. Let's go Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26. All right, and it reads, it says, The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. Okay, so the righteous Jacob, all right, was given the laws, the statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, all right, but what happened? Through violence, the way of the wicked seduced them, okay, and we're getting ready to come to that time again, all right, we're about to be tested just like the Israelites back then were tested, and the only way that you're going to overcome is if the Spirit of the Lord is on you. Revelation 12 and 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Esau knows his time is short, so he's gonna he's trying to microchip everyone, establish his NWO, the New World Order. It's the same people, all right, the Greeks and the Romans, the same people, all right, and that's why we must pray that the Lord delivers us, okay? Because anybody who bows down this time, this is it. This is the final test. Psalms chapter one forty and verse one. Deliver me, O Yahweh, from the evil man, and preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent's at like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips, and an adder is a a very poisonous snake. Oh, all right. So they've sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Okay, why? Because it's referring to the serpent in the garden. All right. It when it's not an actual serpent. It's talking about Esau. Okay, poison is under their lips. Okay, why? Because uh, they push out that poison. They push out false doctrine, lies, okay, falsehoods, telling you to forsake the Heavenly Father. All the way back to the beginning, it's the same story over and over. And they did the same thing during the time of the Greeks and the Romans. All right, and that's the reason why Yahawashai had to come. Because Yahawashai, he, he allowed us, he, he was that blood sacrifice, and the, sac the sacrificial lamb, you know, so that we could be forgiven because according to the law no no forgiveness there's no forgiveness of sins unless blood has been shed all right it's hebrews 9 and 22 okay so you know he, he uh he sacrificed so that we could be forgiven and brought back to the heavenly father and received of the holy spirit 
All right, it says, Keep me, O Yahweh, from the hand of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. All right, and that's that, that, uh, those traps. Okay, they, they, they're coming up with all kind of different things, uh, to depopulate the earth. All right, it says, I said, I have said unto the Lord, thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Yahweh. O Yahweh, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Yahweh, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. And let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. And that's what's getting ready to happen. Okay. See, they, they got away with it that time before. All right. But this time around, Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai said, I'm going to send down Michael the archangel to protect my people. All right. Certain men are going to receive spiritual powers. So this is the final day of reckoning after after many, many years, thousands of years of, of the Israelites being pillaged, tortured all right, by these Greeks and these Romans, these Edomites. Okay, this time the Lord is about to bring recompense. So this destruction that's coming upon them is not just for what they did here in America, but what they did in the Roman Empire and the Greek Empire and even before that. Okay, because they were doing stuff to us before then. Okay, when we fled from ancient Egypt, all right, the Edomites, they were beaten on, on, on the weak and the feeble of our people back then try, that were trying to run from the Egyptians. All right, so continuing on, it says, uh, I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of his of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. Fire. All right. Let's go ahead and get this right quick. We'll close out. Hebrews chapter 2. And verse 14 and 15. says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Talking about Yahweh Shai. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. All right. Esau, Edom. Okay. His blessing was the sword. Okay. He's that rider on the red horse spoken of in um, Revelation chapter 6. Okay. He was given a great sword and the power to take peace from the earth. All right. It's talking about Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. All right. So now we're, we're able to be free. Okay. Through, through Yahweh Shai. Okay. Because we, we, the same way that he was resurrected, uh, we know that we're going to be resurrected. Even if we are martyrs for the truth. Okay, verse um, 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All right, just like our forefathers. Okay, our forefathers, they, they, they a lot of them folded, you know, in the, in the face of, of death. All right, because once again, you know, deliver me from the violent man, Esau, Edom. The Greeks were given a great sword. The Romans were given a great sword. All Edomites. All right, that's their blessing. That's how they've taken over the earth. Okay, but now we see these heathen nations are preparing to rise up against them. All right, and then also, you know, uh, the, the, hope, the hopeful elect. All right, some of the elect men will receive spiritual power and be used as the battle axe and weapons of war against the wicked. All right, and this time our victory is written in, into the prophecies. Okay, so all we got to do is keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether we're here or whether they forbear. All right, I know I covered a lot in this. Okay, I went over, you know, the uh, the history of how certain Israelites became Greeks. All right, they weren't, they didn't literally become white men. All right, they they became Greeks through custom and culture. They were Gentiles because they were given to idols. All right, so I just read how that happened. Okay, the violent, uh, the violent took the kingdom of heaven by force. That's what that's really going into. All right, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, through the Greeks and the Romans. Uh, taking captive the Israelites, all right, and then, you know, also the prayer for our deliverance in this final test, okay, where they're getting ready to do the same again, because now the Israelites have woken up, they've returned back unto the Lord, all right, not all of them, but the elect has, all right, and now Esau Edom is getting ready to come down having great wrath, because he's going to try to to stifle that 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 reconciliation once and for all, all right, so brace yourself for impact, Okay, because it's about to get bloody. So, anyways, Lord's will is edifying as always. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakwadash, and until next time, Shalom.